happening in the school district. Our uh, model was the beatings will continue until the morale improves. When you have some of the best teachers in this area right now thinking about leaving and want to go someplace else, we need to do something about it. I think things can be fixed. I really believe that. I think when I was younger, I go, no, there's no way to fix it. But I think things can be fixed. And it's not a loss, but we, it has to start now. And um, again, something needs to be done now. The teachers and staff here are, I'll cry because they're amazing. Work. And um, I'm kind of like Chris. I love the people I work with a lot. And it upsets me when they don't feel as good as they should. They really work hard. They really do. They come in early. They stay late. They volunteer. Um, we had a prep meet Wednesday and Friday. Some of them not only gave up one day, they gave up two days. And they didn't leave till 6 o'clock that night. And then when they left here, they took all their schoolwork home that they had to correct because they were standing out on a track for three hours, four hours. And that's what this school district does. The community does, the faculty does. And um, these things don't happen without a lot of help from a lot of people. This, the achievement banners you see around here, those banners come because of faculty and staff. But um, and with a, a supportive administrator who you know, takes care of us and makes sure we go to the right places and get the right training. And it's, it's important that um, we work as a team. But when concerns and issues are not addressed by some administrators and board members, how much of this extra effort can you expect? I'm saying none. Eventually you get beat up so bad. For example, it only took one anonymous letter about our school and we had a faculty staff meeting right away to address these issues, which I thought was fine. However, but when concerns from the teachers unions were brought forth, not one meeting. I figured, okay, the elephant's in the room, these are our concerns, these are what we're upset about, we need to discuss this, but nothing was brought forward. Not one meeting was called to address any of these concerns. Communication is a two-way street, and listening is part of it. We have to listen to both sides, and many times we have to agree to disagree, but things need to be fixed around here. Morale is important, and um, you need to realize this extra effort that these people put out is pretty unique to this school. That's why I never left. I went to enough other schools to visit or, you know, anything I took, and I came back to Nacelle every time saying, man, this is a unique place and it's a great place. And um, it is not like a lot of other places. So do not take it for granted that all teachers come early, stay late, take paper home to take papers home to prep. Pretty unique to hear. Um, so don't take it for granted. And I think things can be fixed, but some things are broken. Thank you, school board. <coughs> I don't need to hear it often enough. I think your phones have probably been ringing and you've been hearing from many of us. I didn't call you. I wanted to say what I needed to say in front of Rick and all of you. Um, I love this community and school. And I grew up here, and uh, many of you are my dearest friends. Um, I work at the Mesa Youth Camp School. I've worked in the district for 31 years. I am president of the Public School Employees Union, uh, of your classified employees. We're your dishwashers, your wonderful cooks. And congratulations, cooks. You've got a wonderful honor recently. But today, I'm speaking to you as a community member and parent. And if you saw Kellen walk in here, you notice that I'm about to be a grandma again. I'm very pleased about that. And you should be too. That's one more head count. And <laughs> 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 Even though um, I'm an employee, I know it's my right to speak here. And there are employees who are afraid they will be retaliated against in some manner if they speak here tonight. And that's pretty sad. Whether those feelings are justified or not, they feel it. They're not here by my side. I didn't go to my um, members and ask them to come here and speak. I asked if they want to, but I'm not representing them because I think some of them are kind of fearful of that. 
I want to recognize the teachers and their efforts to help our children succeed. Obviously, they are very successful as evidenced by our excellent state testing scores They're among the top schools in the state. Our teachers also do a wonderful job in preparing our students for college. Um, I think I wish Kellen could tell you, um, I'm just going to use Bruce, Bruce Wise's name, Travis Crystal Kellen, all went to college universities. And they said Bruce Wise prepared them for, for English classes, that they were heads above everybody else there, that they were ready. And that's, that's pretty neat. Thank you for this that you're here. I want to thank um, Karen Workala for leading our public school and doing it so well. You're part of the reason for that success. Our teachers have had some very serious concerns about the actions of Rick Pass. The teacher group completed a survey and then sent the findings to our administrators and our school board. And I've been told that the survey was dismissed by Rick. I don't know how you all reacted to it. I haven't heard. It was returned, not dismissed. Did you read it? No. Oh. Okay. This has been an ongoing problem. He's, he's also dismissed our union contracts. I mean, he does if he wants in violation of those contracts. We've had a, um, unfair labor practices earlier this year. I don't know if the school board was told about that, but we did resolve it. And it was totally not necessary to begin with had he followed that contract. Um, when we have these kind of violations, it leads to grievances, it causes angst, it causes problems. Good leaders make their employees feel valued and important, not diminished and not powerless. They're eager to receive feedback from those around them, including you, the community members. The first bond didn't pass. No feedback was sought from the community. And it was sent to us again, but no changes. It failed, probably at one of the highest percentages ever. Um, I hope we're all listening now. I think the community is trying to tell you something. Uh, another concern I want to bring up is um, that, lump, that lunch program fingerprint reader. It was ordered and used without the knowledge of the community or parents. Um, I understand a letter was sent out after it was used. Um, I find this extremely alarming. I don't understand how it works, but I know things go into that state database system that I wouldn't want anybody else to know, including, I mean, we, we as a school can enter our students' social security numbers in there. Why would we put that in there? I don't know if this district does or not, but I, that, we don't, they don't need that information. I like my, my daughter walking up to the person at, at the lunch counter and hearing hello, Kellen or Hello Travis or Crystal. I mean, that's what makes us so wonderful. We don't need that little reader, and I don't like that information being there. It gets us accustomed to having um, that kind of technology and giving it to districts and um, federal government, that kind of thing. I wish there had been some feedback and input in regards to that. I don't think that whole thing should have happened. The leader that I want for my school is one who brings people together instead of dividing us. I want a good leader who tries to get the best out of their team by being understanding, inspiring them, and rewarding effort. A good leader never rules by fear. And I think um, if that leader was here, we'd all be clapping our hands and saying, yes, and that's not happening. That's the bottom line here. Pretty darn simple. Probably got some faults, and one of them probably communications. I think if people give him a chance, and people can work with him on communications and things like that, I think we could have a pretty good situation. And we need to be a very competitive man. And I think he's got the school and the school district and the teachers and everybody. I'm surprised. 
surprised I've heard, I haven't heard anything about the ascension amongst the teachers. And I'm surprised to hear that they're here. So, anyway, I don't know. I think I'm going to hang with Rick and uh, work with him and see what happens with his communication. And I think it will work out. And changing superintendents every two or three years is not the best thing. But we don't need that. And a lot of times we change superintendents because of personal vendettas. And that's not the right way to go for something like that. We've had that happen in our school district in the past where people run for the school board for one reason. And one reason is to have a personal vendetta on somebody. So I, I, I'd like to see people think real seriously about what's going on. And for the teachers, and I'll just say this and then move to what I want to say. I truly have been, I had a lot of teachers, some neutral, and many that have concerns who are afraid to show up to this meeting tonight. They're afraid. I've had community members that don't even, they're not even employed up here, afraid, and they've told me they're afraid. And they're afraid of retribution. And I think that's just sad that we can't show up to a meeting and disagree on things without that fear. Thank you for this opportunity to share the report. My name is Rob Dalton. I'm an ASL teacher of 17 years and a father of four three of which will be attending ASL school next year. While I have some very strong concerns from a teacher's perspective regarding our current leadership and have some equally strong concerns as a parent about how decisions are made and communicated or not communicated, it is ultimately from my position as a bond committee member that I'd like to address the board. We had a bond fail once and then fell worse a second time. One of the tricky parts of being on the bond committee was trying to decipher ultimately what a no vote meant. We did receive some feedback and there's plenty of speculation as to why it did not pass. Do people not support the gym? How much did the cost of the project and our economy play a role? Or to what extent was it a message about our leadership? We heard lots of other things too, but ultimately we just don't know how much each of those factors played a role. I suspect that we are not likely to pass a bond under our current climate. And until we get a clear understanding from our community on why the vote went the way it did, we will just keep feeling bonds. I would like to recommend that the district hire an outside entity to survey our community on their concerns. I think it is vital that we start many relations with our community and crucial for the future of school bonds, this school, and our students. When we get the survey results, I believe we will find that many of the concerns brought to our attention 
will be things within the district's control to change. And it is for this reason, our ability to address change, that I would also recommend not committing the district to a three-year contract extension right now. Simply put, if we extend the contract right now, but then we get feedback from the survey that the leadership was a major factor in our public's voting decision, we will have given away the district's ability to respond to that concern. I believe there is a false sense of urgency to renew the superintendent's contract. We have time. We do. While I think it is fair that Rick wants to know what his status is with the district, I would ask you this. Is Rick's need to know this right now really greater than our need as a school district to take the time to figure out how to regain the support of our community? Thank you for hearing me out. I would just like to say <clears throat> I'm going to be running for the school board this fall and uh, I've spoke with the uh, all the board members except one with my concerns and all those concerns have been expressed in one form or another tonight. Um, some of these concerns uh, over probably 14 months ago were addressed to this very board and we're hearing a lot of those same things brought up again tonight. So I would just like again to urge the board, which I've urged them when I spoke to them independently, to not renew the contract. Thank you. Ron Salmi? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> I'm sure glad to have it. 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 I'm sure glad to renewing a contract. It's got over a year to go yet. Let's wait to see how the uh, elections come out. Let those board members uh, think about it. That's all I got to say. Uh, Karen Burkham. Thank you. 
yes, I had very little hope it would make it the second time. Because not even one postcard came to my mailbox trying to tell me why I should vote for them. As a result, nothing did change some minds because you got a bigger no vote than before. Then you really put this for granted. This, the decision to give us no choice in the vote other than the, entire, other than the entire package was also unfortunate. You could have let us break down our wishes into different choices, but you bundled the full $8 million into one vote. You took us for granted. I hope in the future the school board will consider hiring professional help with any capital campaign to help you with your community relations. Clearly, as stated previously in this room, your relations with the community are down at pretty much zero point. And you must use outside, which you mean people not of the school board, not of the school board, and not of the teachers, who help you determine where the community stands with you. And I applaud the statements that have been made about find out what the community thinks, because we are your donors. Taxpayers donate by being willing to pay in their taxes. And in order to get a donator to donate, you have to build a relationship of trust. At this point, I don't think there is much relationship of trust with this community. You need every single one of us, including your elected state representatives, to support you. Treat us with respect, and you will receive the same back. Engage with us to earn our understanding of the importance of the project. Our kids deserve better leadership from you. To quote Congresswoman Gabby Gifford, shame on you for the way you handle the problems. Okay, I believe everybody that signed up has had a chance to speak. Um, if there's somebody that would like to speak right now, I, I would allow that right now. If not, we're going to move on.